everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I have a mega trash to treasure video where I'm sharing all of my thrift store DIYs all in one. Since this is a mega video, they are labeled a little bit out of order, so just keep that in mind. I really hope you enjoy today's video and now let's go ahead and get right into it. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be transforming a cutting board that I picked up from Goodwill. It was a pretty large and I knew that I would be able to turn it into something really great. It was kind of already beat up a little bit, which was nice because that goes perfect with the rustic farmhouse decor that I currently have in my home. To transform the piece, I first started by painting the entire cutting board with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I did do three different coats of this paint to get everything covered up really nicely. Once all of those coats of paint were dry, I wanted to give this piece a distressed look, so I used some sandpaper and I started by sanding around all of the edges first, and then I knew that I wanted to have a few pieces or places on the front sanded down so that the natural wood color would come through. The sandpaper that I'm using is 100 grit, so since I did three coats of paint, I really had to sand through that paint. I really wish I would have had a 60 or 80 grit. It would have made things so much easier and I would have spent less time sanding. Now that I have my cutting board all painted and distressed, I'm using this stencil that I picked up from Joanne Fabrics. It did come in a pack of stencils and I will try to have it linked down in the description box if it's still available. I am only going to be using the wreath part of this stencil. I just centered it right on my cutting board and then to hold it into place, I'm using some painter's tape on the top and the bottom of the stencil. To stencil my wreath, I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush and the Folk Art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. Anytime I'm stenciling, I like to use my fingers to hold down the stencil right around the areas where I'm painting. And I do like to build up the color instead of using a lot of paint all at once on my paintbrush. This helps from any bleeding. And you can also use a Mod Podge on your project before you put your stencil down and then paint over top of it. That will also help with bleeding. But I usually just skip the Mod Podge step and go right to stenciling because I'm a little impatient. After I have my wreath all painted, I did wait for it to dry before removing my stencil. I'm also going to be using this rooster from the stencil pack that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I want to say this was $2.99 or either $3.49 and then I paid 30% off of that price. I'm putting my rooster right in the center of the wreath and then I'm securing it with painter's tape on all four sides. To paint on my rooster, I'm using that same Dollar Tree stencil brush and that same rich black chalk paint. And I'm doing the same thing as I normally do. I build up the paint a little bit at a time, just putting a little bit on my brush. And I knew with this rooster, if there was some of that white color peeking through the black, it was gonna be okay because it would give me more of a vintage look. Once the paint was all dry, I then removed the stencil. For the last step in this project, I'm using some of this rope and I strung it through the hole that was in the top of the handle on this cutting board and then I just cut it down to the size that I wanted it to be and made a knot. Here is my cutting board all transformed. Obviously this is just a decor piece. I love how it turned out and it goes perfect with all of the farmhouse decor I have in my kitchen. Now for the second DIY and transformation today, I'm going to be making over this washboard that I picked up from Goodwill. This was $3.99 and I couldn't believe that somebody would take this vintage washboard and just glue all these random things onto it, but I knew that I could make it look really cute in my farmhouse a laundry room. So what I first started doing was just peeling off this like rooster that they had I think super glued on and then also some of these like little paper cutouts and this country word I just peeled that right off some of that glue that was on the actual like washboard part was kind of hard to get off I didn't have any goo gone or anything like that I'm completely out so what I ended up using was just some acetone um, nail polish remover I just poured a bunch of it on a cotton pad and then just saturated all of the glue and I let it sit there for quite a while and then I just scrubbed it off and it seemed to work pretty good. Next I'm painting all of the wood on my washboard with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did do two coats of this paint. 
You'll see here I have some painters taped down on the metal part, but I ended up not really needing to use that, so I didn't bother putting it on the rest of it. For any paint that I did get on the metal part, I just used that same acetone nail polish remover on a Q-tip and just removed it. Now I'm adding some distressing to my washboard. I'm using my Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Java on one of my Dollar Tree stencil brushes. And I'm very lightly just dry brushing this color over top of all of the parts of the washboard that I've painted with the plaster color paint. And this is just gonna give me a more of a rustic look that you guys know I love so much. For this project, I did already cut out this laundry self-service vinyl from my Cricut machine, and I'm just going to be transferring that onto my washboard. I originally was going to use a stencil from Hobby Lobby that said laundry, but the stencil ended up being just a little bit too big for the space on my washboard, so I couldn't use it, and I ended up just going with this one from Cricut, and this is a Cricut um, like self-made one. They have this right on the Cricut design space already made for you. Originally for this project, I was just going to leave it like that with the vinyl, but then I went back a day later and decided to add some of these mini clothespins. I'm using four of them and I'm painting them with that uh, Folk Art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. I did one coat of this paint on all four of the clothespins and then I used a doubled piece of jute. I just measured that for the length of my washboard to go across the very top of it. I cut that down to size and then on each end of the two pieces of jute, I just tied them together in a knot. And this is just gonna help me be able to put the pin through the jute a little bit better. The pins I'm gonna be using to hold my jute into place are these brass push pins that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. They came in a pack of pins and I've had them in my craft stash forever. I just thought that they would be really nice to add to this uh, project. What I'm doing is just pressing the pins into the knots that I've already made on the piece of jute and then hammering them into the wood. Then because I wanted the push pins to match the rest of my project, I decided to paint the top of them with that rich black chalk paint. For the last step in this project, I'm attaching all four of those painted clothes pins to my strung piece of jute on the front of my washboard, and I just used a little bit of hot glue on the back side of each clothes pin. And this is the washboard all transformed. I think it turned out super cute. It is way more my style. I wasn't really feeling the country glue on vibes that the previous owner had going on. And I know that this is definitely gonna be a piece I display in my laundry room. Moving right along to the third project today, I'm gonna be transforming this fruit basket that I picked up from Goodwill. These are always great to do so many different kinds of projects with. This one I only paid 99 cents for, so I knew I had to get it when I saw the price. For this one, I started by removing the handle on the basket. I knew that I did not want the handle to be on here, so I kind of had a hard time getting it off. I ended up trying to pry it off with a butter knife and that really wasn't working. And then I tried getting it off with some pliers. I was able to finally get it off, but I could not get the little push pin things on the sides off. But I knew that I was gonna be covering those up with fabric, so I ended up just leaving them on. Then I started painting my basket with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. You guys will probably notice I'm using this color in all four of my projects today. I really love this color. And I did a one coat of this paint on my entire basket, even the bottom of the basket. I wasn't too worried if some of that wood color showed through the white because that's just less distressing <laughs> that I would have to do. And I really like a distressed look to a lot of my home decor. I know I said I painted my entire basket. I did not paint the entire basket because I left the inside of the basket that wood color because I'm gonna have fabric on the inside of the basket so that really doesn't need to be painted. After the paint was all dry, I then took some of this striped fabric that I had in my craft stash and I just started seeing about how much of it I would need to go on the inside of my basket. This is from Hobby Lobby last year. I believe they still have this fabric. I really love it so much. It's just a staple. If you are into farmhouse decor, it's good to have on hand for crafts. 
So once I cut my fabric down a little bit, I wasn't really sure how I was going to attach it to my basket, if I was going to staple it, but I ended up going with hot glue. So what I did was folded the fabric over, placed the hot glue on that folded edge of the fabric, and then just pressed it onto the basket to hold it into place and for it to be attached. And I continued that step around the entire top edge of my basket. But once I got around like halfway through my basket, I realized that my stripes were gonna end up being like horizontal instead of vertical, like I've already been gluing them on. So I just had to cut some of that fabric down a little bit and just stick it into the basket and then take a new strip of that fabric and then just start over on the other side. And then you really couldn't see where the two fabrics met together. There was a little bit of a line, but you really can't see it. I wasn't too worried about it. I continued gluing my fabric to the top of my basket until I had the fabric going all the way around. I thought it would be cute to add some extra detail to this basket, so I'm adding some of this nautical rope to the very top of the basket, right over top of that striped fabric. I'm using hot glue to attach it. I just put the hot glue right on the fabric at the top of the basket and then pressed on my rope. Once I got all the way back around on my basket, I cut my rope and then I tried to glue it down as close as I could to my beginning piece of rope so that there wouldn't be any noticeable seams. Then I decided I wanted to add some more rope, so I'm attaching rope on the bottom of the fabric. The same as I did the top rope, I'm just adding hot glue onto the basket right underneath my fabric and then pressing on my rope. Now I tried to keep my seams all in the same place where they start and end so that that can be the back side of my basket and you really won't be able to see it. For a basket like this one, you can pretty much display anything you want in it. You can do florals, you can do books and magazines, towels, all kinds of different things. But I personally decided I wanted to add some of these really pretty spring florals since we are getting into springtime. And then I added some of my vintage rolling pins and I'm going to be displaying them on my countertop. For the last finishing touch on my project, I'm adding this unfinished wood word cutout that says gather. This is from Hobby Lobby. It came in a pack of a bunch of different unfinished wood words and I'm staining it with my CraftSmart wood stain in the color brown. Once I have it all stained, I'm then adding a piece of jute that's gonna be doubled. I just doubled it up, cut it down to size, and then tied a knot on the end. The knot part, I'm hot gluing to the back side of the H on the word gather. I'm then using some hot glue to attach both of those end jute pieces on the inside of my basket. And then I did use a little bit of hot glue to attach the jute on the front of my basket as well. And here is my basket all made over. What I love about this one is you can use it in a pretty much any room of your house to display all different kinds of things. So I know I'll be getting a ton of use out of this. Now moving into the fourth and final project today, I'll be making over this wood cutting board that I picked up from Goodwill. I paid $3.99 for it. And what I loved about this one is it has the wedge on the bottom, which I knew would make for a perfect sign or just something that could be standing. So that's what I'll be doing today. I'm gonna to be transforming this piece into a chalkboard. To start out, I used painter's tape around the entire inside because that part is gonna be where I make my chalkboard part and then the rest of it I can paint another color. Now that I have all of my painter's tape applied, I can now start painting the rest of my chalkboard and this I'm using my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster and I did two coats of this paint on all of the wood portions on the outside of where I used the painter's tape. Then for the back side, it did have these like little sticky things for when it was a cutting board. I just used a butter knife to peel those off and then I did paint this back side with the same two coats of that Waverly paint in the color plaster. Then once all of my paint was dry, I used my folk art chalk paint in the color castle and I dry brushed that over all of the parts where I painted the plaster color. This is just giving my piece a little bit of a distressed vintage look. Since I have my main color on the outside all painted, I can now remove my painter's tape from the inside where I'm gonna be making my chalkboard. For the chalkboard portion, I'm just putting the paint right on where I'm gonna be making a chalkboard. I ended up putting a way too much paint on, so I should have just put a little bit on and then brushed it on a little bit at a time, but I didn't, so I just had to 
wipe a bunch of the paint off that was on my brush and then try to smooth it out as smooth as I could possibly get it. I did do two different coats of this chalkboard paint and I did let it dry about an hour in between each coat. And this is the Martha Stewart chalkboard paint in this gray color. I've had this for a really long time, so I'm not even sure if they make it anymore, but I do know that Dollar Tree sells chalkboard paint now. I'm adding the word farmhouse to the bottom of my chalkboard. I'm using these unfinished wood letters. These ones, I believe, are from Hobby Lobby, and I'm staining them with my Craftsmart wood stain in the color brown, and I only did a one coat of this stain on all of my letters. As you can see, I have like a distressing underneath where I'm going to be gluing my letters. I actually already glued the letters on and they were not center, so I had to peel them off. And then instead of a repainting, I thought it would be really cute to just add some distressing, so I sanded over where I had originally glued them. But right now, I'm just re-gluing all of the letters that spell farmhouse on. I placed hot glue on the back side of each letter and then just pressed them on the bottom of my chalkboard. Then I'm using some sandpaper to sand away some of those coats of paint that I painted right over top of the magnetic strip that was originally on the cutting board. I thought it would be cute to have some distressing underneath the word farmhouse. And I did want that magnetic strip to show a little bit because I'm gonna be adding a magnet with a chalkboard pen. This chalkboard pen is from Dollar Tree and I used one of the Dollar Tree magnets and I just hot glued them together and then there you have it, you have a magnetic a chalkboard pen attached to your chalkboard. My chalkboard part is all finished, but I thought it would be really cute to add a small wreath to the front of it. So I'm using one of my grapevine wreaths that I already had in my craft stash and some of these boxwood stems from Walmart and these mini white flowers from Hobby Lobby. I just cut and tore them down so the stems were really small and then I hot glued them to the one side of my wreath. To make the hanger for my wreath, I'm using some of this cream color and green ribbon that I just recently picked up from Walmart. It was in with all of their spring decor. I'm cutting the ribbon down for the length that I want it to be, and then it was a little bit too thick for my size wreath, so I'm cutting both ends of that off to make the ribbon a little bit smaller. And then I hot glued the two ends of the ribbon together at the very top. To attach my wreath, I folded my ribbon over along the back side of my chalkboard and then I used a push pin and just nailed that ribbon right to the back of my chalkboard. This way I can change out the wreath for different seasons or just remove it entirely. Here is my chalkboard all finished. I think it looks super cute with a wreath on it and I can always take it off if I want to later on. The first thrift store item I'll be showing you today is this vintage paper plate holder. I actually wasn't sure what it was when I bought this, but luckily my mom knew exactly what it was. I paid $5.99 for it, and I think that's a great deal because it's such a good solid piece. Before I started making this piece over, I made sure to clean it up really well because you never know where any of these items have been. Once I got it all cleaned up, I started painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And it was a little tricky to paint this just because it had the two pieces and my paintbrush is long and I really couldn't get it in there very well. But I managed. I did have to do two different coats of paint to get all of the wood color covered up nicely. Once my paint was completely dried, I then took my Dollar Tree stencil brush and my Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut and I started dry brushing this color around the entire piece. As you guys know, I love using these Dollar Tree stencil brushes to dry brush on pretty much all of my projects. They're just so small and you can really get the paint exactly where you want it without overdoing it. I mainly focused this color around all of the edges and then just did it a little bit on all of the flat surfaces. Once I had that color on, then I went in with my Dollar Tree stencil brush once again and my Folk Art chalk paint in the color Castle. And I dry brushed this color over top of all of the same spots that I just painted that hazelnut color on. By adding this second color, it's really going to add a lot of dimension and give my piece a more rustic look. Next, I'm cutting this stencil down a little bit so that it will fit on the front of my piece a little bit better. I did pick this stencil up from Joann Fabrics and it comes in a pack of stencils and I've actually been using these uh, stencils a lot in my videos. And here I'm just centering it right on the front of the piece and then I'm using some painter's tape to tape everything down so that it doesn't move around once I'm painting. For all of the words on my stencil, I'm using my chalk paint in the color Castle. 
And when I stencil, I do like to use stencil brushes and I work with a little bit of paint and I build it up as I go. And these Dollar Tree stencil brushes work really great and they're super inexpensive. I've now waited for the paint to completely dry and now I'm just peeling off the stencil. Next, I'm cutting down this coconut liner that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm cutting it down into three different sections. Once I have all three sections cut, I'm then placing them down in the space uh, in between the two pieces of wood here, and I'm doing them a one at a time. I'm placing one piece more on the right side, I'm putting another piece more on the left side, and then I'm also gonna be placing one that, where you can see the coconut liner coming out from the top. I'm gonna be using this piece for a floral arrangement, not as a paper plate holder. So here I'm taking some of these eucalyptus stems that I got from Walmart and I'm cutting them down so that they're easier to work with and then just placing those along with some lamb's ear that I also picked up from Walmart right in the very top. And then for the very last step, I'm taking some nautical rope that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm putting it right through the hole that was already in the very top handle of this piece and then tying a large knot. Here is my piece all finished. I love how it turned out. And I can always take out the floral stems that are in it and actually use it as a paper plate holder. But for now, I'm gonna use it just like this. Now moving on to the second thrifted piece in today's video is this small wooden crate with an open front. I picked this one up for $1.99 and it definitely has a lot of potential. To make this piece over, I started by painting the entire thing with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And it did already have like this white color to it, so I really didn't have to cover up too much. So I only did one coat of paint for this piece. After that paint has all dried, I'm then painting on my castled color chalk paint right over top of everywhere that I just painted the plaster color. And I only did one coat of paint of this as well. Next, I'm taking 120 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding over the entire piece. I'm even sanding on the inside of this piece as well. I wanted this to have more of that farmhouse rustic look that I love so much. Next, I've already cut down this chicken wire to fit in the open front slot on my crate. I did have a clip of me doing this, but unfortunately the clip was bad and I couldn't get it onto my computer. And originally I was going to use a staple gun to staple this chicken wire onto the wood, but the wood is so thin on this piece that the staples would have went right through. So instead I'm just using some hot glue around all of the sides to secure it. I decided to use these two tin white buckets in my crate and I picked these up from Dollar Tree. I'm then placing some floral foam inside of the tins and then filling them up with some of the Spanish moss that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. And then I'm filling the buckets with some of these lamb's ear that I got from Walmart right in the center. And once I have the lamb's ear all in, I wanted to add a little bit of white inside of the buckets. So I'm adding some of these white berries and I'm just pulling them right off of their stems and I picked these ones up from Hobby Lobby. Here's my wood crate all made over. For this one, you could switch it up and do so many different things with it. I plan on probably keeping the tin buckets inside and then just switching up the florals every season. Now moving on to the third and final thrifted piece for today. It is this wooden shelf. I was so excited when I saw this because it's in great shape and it really is a nice solid piece. And I picked this one up for $3.99. To make this piece over, I again started by painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And even though this piece was a nice solid piece that was in great shape, because of the way the wood grooves were, I had to paint in a couple different directions to make sure I got the paint into the wood grooves. And I did do two different coats of this white paint. After my paint was all dry, I then took an old candle and I'm rubbing the wax over top of this paint on my entire piece. I'm trying out a new technique. I wanna try like a chippy paint method. So this is my first time trying this method and you guys will see the results in the end of the video. But here I'm, like I said, I'm just rubbing this old candle on top of my entire piece right over top of that plastered color paint. And I wish I would have had like a thinner candle or even like a wax crayon to go in between the two uh, shelves that are on this piece. 
Well, once I had the wax all on, I then went in with my Castle Color chalk paint and I'm painting that right over top of the wax and I did do two coats of paint over top of the wax. After that paint has completely dried, I'm then applying duct tape right onto my shelf and I'm doing this while working in small sections. I'm then pressing that tape really, really well onto my shelf so that when I peel the tape off, it's going to take that Castle Color top layer right off wherever I applied the wax underneath and it's going to have that plaster color come right through and give me that really chippy effect and I'm just continuing those same steps over and over again until I have done this on my entire shelf. This again is my first time ever trying this technique and so far I think I'm really loving it. I think by doing it a few more times I'll be able to perfect it a little bit better but I will definitely be using it on some projects in the near future. For the last step, I added two sawtooth hangers onto the back of the shelf, but unfortunately I could not add the clip because those scenes were corrupted, so I'm really sorry about that. Here is my chippy farmhouse shelf all finished. I think it is so cute, and I really love using that technique. I would love to know, have any of you tried this technique or have you used a similar technique? The first piece that I'll be making over today is this child size footstool. I picked this up from Goodwill and it was in great condition and I only paid $3.99 for it. To make this piece over, I started by painting the top portion of the stool with my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle. I did have to do three different coats of paint to get everything all covered up really nicely. And I also painted the underneath part of that top part of the stool with that same Castle color. Once that paint was completely dry, I then took my Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster and I painted that on the bottom portion and all of the legs of the stool. Now I know that this was already a white color, but there was some of the paint that was chipped off and it was a little bit shiny and I wanted the legs and the bottom part of the stool to have more of a matte look. So that's why I'm painting it over top of the white paint that's already on there. And I did mess up a little bit and get some of that castle color on to the original white so I just had to touch that up a little bit as I went. I used some painters tape along the edges and then just touched up that castle colored paint so that everything was nice and even and I didn't have any paint mess ups. And I did wait for that paint to dry before I peeled off the painters tape. Next I'm adding some of that plaster color chalk paint on top of the castle color paint on the very top of the stool and I used an old chip brush to paint this on and I'm very lightly painting it on because I wanted to have a little bit of a worn look on the top of the stool. I'm also doing that same thing to the bottom of the stool where I have all of the castle color paint. I also wanted to add some distressing to the bottom portion of the stool and on the legs. So here I'm taking my Dollar Tree stencil brush and that castle color paint once again and I'm just dry brushing that over top of all of the plaster color paint. Once I had that paint on, then I went in with a smaller paintbrush and a little bit of chalk paint in the color ink and I very lightly painted that over top of any areas that I thought would look naturally distressed. And I also took a really small paintbrush and I painted the castle color and all of the little crevices that were on the bottom of the footstool. Next I'm centering this Fresh Flower Market stencil that I picked up from Hobby Lobby right on the top of my footstool and then I'm using four pieces of painter's tape to hold it into place. For my lettering on my stencil I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm also using my Dollar Tree stencil brush. If you guys have seen any of my videos where I stencil you know that I love using these Dollar Tree stencil brushes. And I like to build up the paint as I go. I use a little bit of paint and then just go over it a second time if I need to. This really helps from keeping the paint from bleeding underneath all of the letters. Once all of that paint has completely dried, I'm then just peeling off all four pieces of my painter's tape and removing my stencil. Here is my footstool all made over. I think it turned out so cute. Here I do have it shown outside. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it outside, but if I do, I will definitely be putting a water resistant sealant over top. 
Now moving into the second flip for today, I'll be transforming this Beach Sand Happiness sign. I picked this one up also at Goodwill and I paid $3.99 for it. It's a really nice a solid piece and as you'll see here in just a couple of minutes, I'm actually going to be doing two different projects on this one piece. To transform this piece, I started by painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Surprise, surprise, you guys know I love using this color paint. I did paint this entire piece in that color and I did have to do three different coats to get everything covered up really nicely. Once that paint was completely dry, I then took my Dollar Tree stencil brush and my hazelnut uh, colored chalk paint from Waverly and I just dry brushed that on top of the entire piece and on the flat longer sides the front and back of this piece I did all of my brush strokes going in the same direction and I am painting the entire piece because I'm going to be doing two projects one on the front and then one on the back side as well. After the hazelnut color, I'm also adding my paint in the color Castle and I'm using a large chip brush to do this and I'm dry brushing that color over top of all of the same spots that I did the hazelnut color. And then to add just a little bit more dimension, I'm taking my chalk paint in the color Ink and I'm dry brushing that over top of the whole piece as well. Next, I'm using my drill to make a hole in the top center portion of this piece so that I can run some jute through the very top of it. Now I'm taking a double piece of jute and wrapping it around the very top of this bottle that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I'm tying it off in a knot on one side of the bottle. I'm taking another double piece of jute, wrapping it around the top of the bottle once again, only this time I'm tying off the knot on the opposite side of the bottle that I just did the other knot. Next I'm taking all four strands of my pieces of jute and I'm stringing them through the very top hole that I drilled into this piece. Once I have them all four strung through, I'm then tying them all together on the very top. I'm still really loving the black and white buffalo check, so here I'm adding one of these ribbons right underneath the jute that's on the bottle and tying it into a very small bow. Next I'm adding some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree into the inside of this bottle and I used the end of a paintbrush to help me push it in there. Once I had the Spanish moss in, I also took some green floral moss and put that on top of the Spanish moss. Once I had the bottle all filled up, I took some of these boxwood stems, I believe these ones are from Walmart, and put them in the very top of my bottle. Here is my second thrifted piece all transformed. I love how it turned out and I'm so happy I was able to add other pieces from my crafting stash as well. Next you're going to see me transform the other side of this piece and you guys already saw me paint it earlier in the video and get it all prepped and ready. I've already created this image on my computer and I've printed it onto some wax paper. I centered the image onto my piece and now I'm taking an old gift card and pressing over the entire image to press the ink into the surface so that it transfers. I'm then taking an old paintbrush or the end of a paintbrush and I'm pressing over all of the lettering so that the ink will transfer a little bit better. Now when I originally did this I didn't think about the distressing colors that I have on the bottom. I have the castle and the ink color which is a little bit darker so my transfer actually didn't end up going that well. If I would have just left this surface all white it would have shown up a lot better. But as you'll see here in a minute when I peel it off um, it doesn't really show up that well. I usually love doing these transfers because one I always have wax paper and two I always have a printer so they don't cost me anything at all. Here I'm just peeling back that wax paper and see it didn't really come through very well. So to fix it I took a sharpie pen and I'm just writing over all of the sayings that I have and all of the garland that I have on the transfer as well. And here is the second side of this piece all finished. My writing isn't perfect but I'm still really happy with how this piece turned out even though I had a little mishap with my wax paper transfer. Now moving on to the third and final thrifted piece for today. It is this decorative finial. I picked this one up from Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. It is so cute. I'm just not a huge fan of the color. 
To make this piece over, I started by painting the entire thing with my folk art chalk paint in the color French Linen. This is a new color that I just recently picked up. Well, I'm not sure if it's new for folk art, but it's new to me. And I really love this color. I think it's gonna be my new go-to. And I did have to do three coats of paint on this piece just to get everything covered up really nicely. Once all of that paint was dry, I then took a small paintbrush and my Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss, and I very lightly painted this onto the entire piece. And in some places, I did a little bit more paint than in others because I wanted it to have a really natural, not, I guess you wouldn't say distressing because it's green, but more of like a moss growing on the entire finial. Once I had the moss color all painted on, I then went in with an even smaller paintbrush and my ink color chalk paint, and I very lightly painted that around all of the crevices and then on the ends of all of the leaves on the top of this piece. And once I was done with the ink color, I decided I wanted to add a little bit more of that moss colored paint. So here I'm just adding a little bit more of that paint color around the entire piece. Here is my thrifted finial all made over. A little bit of paint goes a long way. Just by adding some paint to this piece, it completely transformed it into something totally different. The first piece I'll be showing you that I picked up from my local thrift store is this large red tray. I paid $2.99 for it, and for the size of this tray, that is a great deal. I didn't notice when I was at the store, but once I got home, I noticed there was a crate and barrel tag right on the back side, so definitely a great find. For this tray, I knew I wanted to have it a more neutral color, so to make it over, I went in with my folk art chalk paint in the color Persian Gray, and I painted my entire tray in this color. And I did use two different size paint brushes. I used this larger paint brush for all of the larger areas on the tray. And then I used this smaller paint brush around all of the inside edges. This was just able to help me get a little bit nicer strokes around all of the smaller areas on my tray. I did two coats of paint on the entire tray and I was actually kind of surprised that I didn't have to do more than the two coats since this tray was such a bright red color, but this folk art chalk paint works really great and I definitely recommend it. And then here I am just painting the back side the same color as well. Once all of my paint was completely dry, I'm then centering this home sweet home stencil that I picked up from Joanne Fabrics right in the center of my tray. And then to secure the stencil, I'm placing four pieces of painter's tape along all four sides of the stencil. Next, I started painting on my folk art chalk paint in the color Java using my Dollar Tree stencil brush. I used that same Java color on all of the words on this stencil. And this stencil did come in a pack of stencils from Joanne Fabrics and they are great quality and I'll try to have those linked down below in the description box if you guys are interested. Once all of my paint was completely dry, I then peeled off all four pieces of my painter's tape and then removed my stencil. I was going to leave my tray just like this, but then decided I wanted it to have more of a rustic look to it. If you guys have seen any of my videos, then you know I love the rustic farmhouse style. So here I'm just taking my Dollar Tree stencil brush once again and that same Java colored chalk paint and I'm dry brushing it around my entire tray. I'm doing all of the outside edges, the inside edges, and then I am taking it along the front of the tray as well. And I did do my strokes in a bunch of different um, directions. I did up and down, side by side, and then to make the tray a finished product, I did do the same dry brushing along the back side of the tray as well. Here's my tray all made over. I don't plan on using this piece as an actual tray. I think I'm gonna add a sawtooth hanger along the back side of this tray and then use it as a wall decor piece. The next thrift store item I'll be making over is this wooden crate. This crate was also $2.99 and I knew I had to get it when I saw it because it has so much potential. All of the wood was in great shape. There wasn't any wood chipped away or anything, so it was definitely a good find in my book. 
To make this crate over, I've already washed it up really good because it was really dirty when I got it. And then I started by painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did have to do two different coats of this paint on to get this wood color all covered up. But I wasn't really too precise on my painting and I did have a few little drip marks here and there. But I was okay with it because I want this crate to have a really rustic look. Once this paint is completely dry, I then took an old towel and this folk art wood tint in the color gray and I applied it to my wood crate just like I would a wood stain. I put it on the wood and then wiped it right off. And this is really nice because it's washable with water and doesn't have any like really nasty smells like a regular uh, wood stain would. Once that was dry, I then took my Dollar Tree stencil brush and my Java Color chalk paint from Folk Art and I dry brushed this on the crate anywhere that I wanted it to look aged and worn. So I didn't dry brush it on the entire crate, just in the spots I wanted it to look distressed. Next I'm wrapping two pieces of jute and tying a bow around the very top of these two mason jars that I already had at home. I'm then placing the jars in my wood crate and then adding some of these lavender stems that I picked up from Walmart. I wanted to add something on the front of my wood crate. So here I'm using a scrap piece of wood and I'm spraying it with my Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint. I did have to do two coats of this paint to get it covered really nicely. Once that was completely dry, I then wrote with my Dollar Tree chalkboard marker, Fresh Flowers. What I love about this is I'm able to switch out the words that are on the front of my chalkboard and I can switch out my flowers in my jars for each season. To attach my chalkboard, I'm using some hot glue on the back side of the chalkboard and then pressing that onto the front of my crate. Here's my wood crate all made over and transformed. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I love how I'm able to switch it out for each season by switching up the words on the chalkboard and the florals in the jars. The last thrift store item I'll be making over today are these two gold candlesticks. They were $2.99 a piece and they are such good quality. They're really heavy, so I was super excited when I found these. To make these candlesticks over, I started by painting them with my folk art chalk paint in the color Java. And then after I had both of the candlesticks all painted, I ended up changing my mind on how I wanted them to look. So I'll have them all painted in this Java color and then here you'll see me painting over that Java color with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I painted two coats of this color on the candlesticks and then in a few different spots I had to touch it up with a third coat, but that was only in a few spots. Once both of my coats of the plaster color are completely dry, I then took my Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut on my Dollar Tree stencil brush and I dry brushed that on both of my candlesticks and I focus most of the paint on the parts of the candlestick that stick out. Then wherever there's a crease on my candlesticks, I use this small paintbrush and that same color hazelnut and I painted a line around all of the creases. As you can see here, just by adding the hazelnut color on top of the plaster color, it's giving the candlestick a lot of dimension and it's already starting to look more vintage and aged. Once I have the hazelnut color all on, I'm then taking my folk art chalk paint in the color castle and my Dollar Tree stencil brush once again, and I'm dry brushing this color on top of everywhere that I just painted that hazelnut color, and I'm taking my small paintbrush once again, and then in all of the creases over top of that hazelnut color, I'm painting on the castle color. By adding this second color onto the candlestick, this is really going to add a nice vintage look. Here are my candlesticks all made over. I ended up adding two candlesticks with a little bit of Spanish moss for springtime. I can't believe how good these look. They look just like the ones that you could buy at Hobby Lobby or Kirkland's for a lot more than just the $2.99 a piece price. For DIY number one, I found this pizza pan. I think this is what it is. It's this like really large wood piece and I picked it up from Goodwill. It was $2.99 and I knew that this piece had so much potential and that I could definitely do something with it. 
So the first thing that I started to do with this piece is I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did have to do three different coats of this paint to get everything all covered up nicely. And then once the paint was completely dried, I went in with some sandpaper and I started sanding around all of the edges first to give this piece a really rustic, distressed look. And then once I had all of the edges sanded, I took that same sandpaper and just started sanding in random spots on the front of this piece. Again, I wanted it to be really rustic and distressed and I did use a 60 grit sandpaper so it was really rough and distressed looking. And I did do the exact same thing to the other side of this piece as well. I wanted both sides to look exactly the same. And then I'm also using this Hello Word piece that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I've had it in my stash forever and I'm finally using it today. I decided to paint it with the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Rich Black. And I only had to do a one quick coat of this paint to get everything all covered up. And then I'm also going to be making my own bow for this piece today. And I'm using this burlap ribbon from Walmart. And I did get this around Christmas time last year. I'm just seeing how large I'm wanting my bow to be. And then I'm cutting this piece of burlap ribbon down to size. Then to add some detail to the burlap ribbon, I'm using some of this buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and I'm cutting the buffalo check ribbon the exact same size as the burlap ribbon, and I'm actually gonna be attaching these two together. I'm using some hot glue on the burlap ribbon and then just pressing the buffalo check ribbon over top of that to attach it, and I am attaching it right in the center. Then I'm taking this piece that I just created and I'm forming it into a circle. To form it into a circle, I'm just hot gluing the two ends of the ribbon together. Then to make another piece for my bow, I'm taking the same burlap ribbon and I'm cutting this piece a little bit smaller than the first piece that I did. And then the same with the buffalo check ribbon, I'm just cutting that piece the same size as my burlap ribbon, but only a little bit smaller than the first one I did. I'm hot gluing those two pieces together and then I'm creating a circle with these two as well and just hot gluing the two ends of the ribbon together. Then to create the tail end for my bow, I'm doing the exact same thing, only this time I'm cutting a really extra long piece of that burlap ribbon and the buffalo check ribbon, and then I'm doing those same steps. I'm hot gluing them together, and I'm even forming them into a circle, just like I did with the other two, and hot gluing the two ends of them together. Now that my pieces are made, I can create my bow. I'm placing the smallest piece on top of the medium sized piece and then cinching them together in the center. And then I'm taking a piece of jute and I'm wrapping it around the center several times and then tying a knot on the back end of my bow just to make sure that everything is secure and then I'm just clipping off those jute ends. Then to add some detail to my bow, I'm using some of this cotton cord from Hobby Lobby and I'm first starting to attach it on the back side of my bow and then wrapping it around the front of my bow three times and then I'm just clipping the end off on the back side of my bow and then hot gluing it down. Now I can start placing things on my piece. I'm taking the tail ends of my bow, which is the longest piece I made, and I folded it over in the center. I'm then just kind of figuring out where I'm gonna wanna actually glue everything down before I glue it down. Once I get it all figured out, I then place some hot glue onto my piece and then place my tail ends onto that. And then I just start attaching the rest of my bow, as you can see here. The greenery I'm gonna be using are these lamb's ear stems from Walmart. I'm also using some of these greenery pieces, I believe are from Hobby Lobby, and then these eucalyptus stems also from Walmart. I pulled off the lamb's ears so that they were all separate and easier to work with, and I just started hot gluing them down all around the outside of my bow. I just pulled up the bow a little bit and then glued them down and I did the same thing for the other pieces of greenery. I really liked the mixture of greenery because it adds a lot of dimension. Then for the very last step in this project I needed to attach my Hello Word cutout and to do that I just used hot glue on the back side. 
Here is my pizza pan all transformed into this hello sign. I think it turned out so beautiful. I couldn't be happier with it. And if I ever want to actually hang it, I could always add a hanger on the back. Now moving into DIY number two or transformation number two, I'm gonna be making over this cute little table that I picked up from a local garage sale for only $4. I knew it had so much potential and I knew I had to get it. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is painting the table legs and I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Whenever I'm making over a table, I always like to start by painting all of the legs before I start painting any tops of the tables. I'm then flipping my table over and starting to paint the surface on the shelf that's on the bottom of the table. And then I did the top of the table as well. I always like to paint the underneath portions of my table as well. Even though you're not gonna see it, I just like to do it because it makes the table look finished. Then once the table was all painted and dried, I wanted to add a little bit of distressing. So I'm taking some 60 grit sandpaper and I went around all of the edges of the top of the table and then also the bottom shelf. And then this table had really beautiful detail on the legs and I wanted those to pop. So I took my sandpaper and just sanded around all of the details. And then to seal my table, I'm using this Minwax Polycrylic Protective Finish and I'm using it in clear matte and they do have a bunch of different finishes. And I just used a paintbrush to paint this on and I did do three coats of this sealer to make sure that everything is sealed really nicely and my paint will last. For the top of my table, I knew I wanted to have a design, so I created this one here in my Cricut Design Space. It says, for the best of times are always found when friends and fa family gather round. So I just did my usual cutout with my Cricut and then I transferred it to the top of my table with a little help from my puppy Cooper. And here is my table all transformed and flipped. It was a definitely a good find for $4 and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Next for transformation number three, I'm gonna be making over this beautiful large tray. This is, I believe an old vintage um, like TV tray. This was my grandmother's and I've been waiting to do something with it and I finally decided to make it over. It's beautiful as is, but I knew that I wanted to do something with it. I first started using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. No surprise there. I use this color and paint all the time. I did have to do three different coats of this paint to get that brown stain color all covered up. After all of my coats of paint were dry, I then wanted to add a little bit of distressing. No surprise there either. I love distressing. You guys know that if you've seen any of my videos. I took my 60 grit sandpaper and I started going around all of the edges of my tray. And then this tray had some really beautiful detail on the sides. It had these grooves and I really wanted those to pop. So I went in between all of those grooves with my sandpaper to make those really stand out. Then I decided to add some of this folk art chalk paint in the color Castle. Here I'm just using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to dry brush this color on in random spots to give it some more distressing. Once I had the back all painted, I did the same for the front. I didn't add as much distressing with the paint on the front as I did with the sanding, but I did wanna add just a little bit of extra distressing with the paint. I'm also using this stencil. This one's from Joanne Fabrics. It came in a pack of stencils. It says life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And I'm just placing it in the center. I used my painter's tape to hold the stencil down. And then for all of the words on my stencil, I'm using my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black with a Dollar Tree stencil brush. And then for the little vine on the bottom, I'm using the folk art chalk paint in the color sage shadow. Then once the paint was all dry, I removed all of the painter's tape and the stencil. This is what the tray looks like all transformed. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful and it really fits way better with my decor and it'll always have a place in my heart since it was my grandmother's. Now for the last transformation today, transformation number four, I'm gonna be making over this really cute recipe box. I picked this up from, I believe it was Salvation Army and it was $3.99. 
It's cute as is if this was the kind of style that you have in your home, but I wanted to make mine a little bit more farmhouse. So the first thing I did was start painting it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I did two coats of this paint. I painted the entire thing. I even painted the inside because of course I want this piece to look completely finished. For the front of this piece that says the words recipe, I painted that with that same Waverly paint and plaster as well. And then for around that piece where it was originally like a dark green color, I painted over that with my Castle Color chalk paint from Folk Art and I did two coats of this paint. Once all of the paint was dry, I wanted the recipe word that was cut out on the front of this box to stand out a little bit. So I took some sandpaper and just stand it over that to give it a little bit of distressing and then I used the sandpaper around all of the edges of the box as well. Then to add some detail to this piece I wanted to use these really cute kitchen stencils from Dollar Tree and I first started by just using my painters tape to tape down the stencil where I want to use one of the little designs and for the colors I'm using it's just that same folk art chalk paint in the color castle and I used a Dollar Tree stencil brush to do all of my painting and then after I had one design painted on then I would just move my stencil around retape it down where I want to paint the design on and then did that same same process with the folk art chalk paint and castle with the rest of the designs that I painted on the top. And this is the recipe box all transforms. It now fits perfect with all of my farmhouse decor and I think it turned out super cute. The first item I'm showing you today is this wooden bottle caddy. I picked this up at Goodwill for $3.99 and it is such a good solid piece and I knew it would be perfect to flip. I started by painting the caddy with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did paint the entire piece in this color and I had to make sure to paint in a couple different directions so that I was able to get all of the paint inside of all of the wooden grooves. This piece was made with really rough pieces of wood which I like because it makes it look really rustic. I also really love that this caddy came with a bottle opener already attached to the side. I originally was not going to take it off when painting it, I was just going to paint around it, but then I decided it was probably best for me to take it off, paint underneath where the opener is going to sit, and then place it back on once I was done painting. Once that plaster color was all dry, I then wanted to distress this piece. So to do that, I used my Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Castle and my Dollar Tree Stencil Brush and I dry brushed that right over top of the entire piece. And then once I was done painting, I reattached the bottle opener that was on the side of the caddy. Next I'm applying this windmill stencil that I picked up from Michaels and I'm pressing it down right in the center underneath that bottle opener and then for the paint color I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush once again to paint that color over top of the windmill. Once the paint dried, I then peeled the stencil off from the side and I am going to be reusing this stencil for the other side of the caddy as well so that both sides match and I did it the same way. I just reapplied the stencil in the center just like I did the first time, painted that ink color over top and then once the paint was all dry, I then re-peeled off the stencil. Next I'm applying this Farm Fresh stencil on the front side of my caddy in the center on the top piece of wood. I also got this stencil from Michaels. All of the stencils that I'm using today on this project are all from the same pack of stencils which is really nice. And the color that I'm painting over top of the Farm Fresh is the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink once again and I'm also using the Dollar Tree stencil brush. Once the paint dried I then just peeled the stencil right off. Originally, I was going to leave my caddy without these little houses painted underneath, but when I saw this stencil and it was the perfect size, I knew I had to use it. So I placed it right in the center of the bottom piece of wood on the front of the caddy underneath where I painted the Farm Fresh. And I did the same thing as I did the other stencils. I just applied them and then with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, I painted that over top. And then once the paint was all dry, I peeled the stencil off. 
Here is my caddy all made over. I think it turned out so good and I just love how it goes with the rest of my farmhouse decor that I have in my house. This did have the inserts to fit six different bottles, but the bottles I'm using are a little bit bigger, so I was only able to fit three of them. Now moving into the next thrifted item in today's video, it is this recipe card holder that is shaped like a rolling pin. I also got this piece from Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. When I saw it, it just screamed farmhouse to me and I knew I had to get it. For this piece, I started by painting the middle portion of my rolling pin with my plastered colored chalk paint. And I did have to do two coats to get everything covered up nicely. And for around the sides by the handles, I did use a smaller paintbrush so that I could get in all the little areas really well. And I wasn't really worried about getting the paint on the handles because I knew I would be covering it up with a darker colored paint. After the plaster color was all dry, I then started painting both of my handles. I used the folk art chalk paint in the color castle for these. And I did use a smaller brush when painting this color on so that I didn't have any mess ups and get any of this castle color onto my plaster color. Next I'm applying this blessed stencil that I picked up from Michaels. I'm placing it on the front of my rolling pin on the lower right hand side and I'm just pressing that stencil right on the rolling pin until it's placed exactly where I want it to be. For the paint, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and my Dollar Tree stencil brush. No surprise there. <laughs> and then I'm just dabbing this paint right over the letters, but I'm not using a ton of paint because I want it to look kind of worn where my words are. Once my paint is all dry, I'm then peeling off the stencil. For my handles, I wanted them to have a little bit more color to them, so I had some of that leftover plastered color paint on my brush, and I just very lightly painted that on both of the handles. And for the center of the rolling pin, I took some of that castle color paint that was left over on my brush and very lightly painted that over the entire center portion of my rolling pin. For the very last step, I added some of this a buffalo check ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I just placed it around one of the handles and tied a really simple bow. And here is my rolling pin recipe card holder all finished. I'm so happy with how this one turned out. It took me hardly any time at all to make this one over and it looks perfect in my farmhouse kitchen. Now moving into the last and final flip item for today, it is this really simple wooden cutting board. I picked this up also at Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. I knew when I saw it that it was going to be a perfect project piece. For this project, again, I started by painting it with my plastered colored chalk paint and I did have to do two coats of paint and I painted both sides of the cutting board. After I was done in painting the first coat though, I realized that some of the cutting marks on the board were coming through. So I took some sandpaper, I believe this was 120 grit, and I just sanded over all of the marks that you could see like where there was cuts in the board and then I just painted the second coat over top of that. Next, I'm going to be creating the stripes down the center of my board. I'm using this measuring tape to mark off exactly where the center was, and then I'm taking a piece of painter's tape and placing it a little bit to the left of where that mark was, and then another piece of painter's tape and just pushing it over a little bit to the right of where that center piece was. And then I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color steel and painting that in between the two pieces of painter's tape. After the paint has dried, I'm peeling both pieces of painter's tape off. Now I'm going to be making a smaller stripe to the right of the one that I just created. This one, I'm going to be making the line a little bit smaller. So I'm placing the two pieces of painter's tape next to each other, but like I said, the space in between is going to be smaller. I just measured to make sure that it was consistent all the way down. And then I used that same color steel to paint in between both pieces of these painter's tape. And then once that paint has dried, I'm just pulling off the painter's tape. Now I'm creating another thin stripe on the other side of my center stripe and I'm doing the exact same thing I did on the other side. 
placing two pieces of painters tape with a thin space in between and then measuring to make sure that the space in between is consistent all the way down and then painting in between the pieces of painters tape with my steel colored chalk paint. And once again, when my paint is all dry, I'm then peeling off all of my pieces of tape. For the back side of my cutting board, I did the same lines. I just matched up all of the pieces of painter's tape with the lines I did on the front side so that I could have the same exact consistent lines on both sides of my cutting board. Now that I have my lines painted, I'm then placing the stencil that I got from Hobby Lobby right in the center of my cutting board over top of the stripes I created. I'm then placing some painter's tape on both sides of the stencil to hold it into place so that it doesn't move around when I'm painting. And then because I'm not going to be using any of the words that are on the stencil, I also covered those up with some painter's tape so that I wouldn't accidentally get paint on them and then have the words show through on my cutting board. I only wanted to have the cow, the pig, and the rooster. The paint color I'm using, again, is the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink. I love this color chalk paint, and this brand chalk paint is one of the best, in my opinion. I'm also using my Dollar Tree stencil brush, and I am building up this paint color. I think I did two coats on this one. I wanted to have all of the animals look really dark. Once I had them all painted, I peeled off all of the pieces of painter's tape and removed my stencil. I'm now distressing my entire cutting board using a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and I'm pretty much just sanding in all of the areas that I think would look good distressed. And as far as all of the animals that are painted in that ink color, I did not sand over top of those. All of the paint dust that's coming up from that plaster color is actually going like over top of the black part of the animals and it's making them look really distressed, which I loved. And for the last step, I'm tying a piece of this white and black buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby around the top of my cutting board and tying a really simple bow. Here is the cutting board all made over. This one was such an easy flip and I'm so excited to display this piece in my kitchen. The first item I'll be showing you today is this rectangle shaped decorative box. I picked it up from Goodwill and I paid $2.99 for it. I thought it would make a perfect centerpiece and that's what I'm going to be transforming it into today. To transform this piece, I first started by painting the entire outside of the piece with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did have to do two coats of paint to get that dark color all covered up. I then painted the inside of this piece with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, and I only had to do one coat of that paint. After all of that paint was dry, I then decided that I wanted all of the trim work that was on the front of this piece to be that ink color as well. So to help me out a little bit so that I didn't get the ink color onto the white that I've already painted on, I just used some painter's tape around all of the trim and then painted it. I was able to do it a lot faster this way. And once the paint was dry on each piece of trim, I then just peeled off the painter's tape. I continued the same step for the entire piece. It did take me a little while, but it was definitely worth it in the long run. I had already painted the handles of this piece with that plaster color, but I wanted them to match the trim, so I just went over that white color with my ink colored paint on both handles. And I couldn't forget about the bottom of this piece. I painted this with that ink color as well. I thought a piece of burlap would be super cute along the front of this piece, so here I'm taking a scrap piece of burlap that I had and I'm just measuring and cutting that down to size. And then I wanted to have the burlap frayed out a little bit, so I'm taking all four sides of it and just pulling the burlap pieces off so that all four sides would be nice and frayed. Then I went back into painting this piece a little bit more. After looking at it, I wanted it to have a little bit more of a rustic look, so I decided to take my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle and dry brush that on the entire piece. I did focus the paint more on all of the ink colored paint on the trim and then on the handles. And to paint this color on, I used a chip brush and I also painted the same color on the inside and the bottom of the piece as well. Then back to that burlap piece that I had already cut and frayed, I'm just hot gluing it to the very front of my piece right in the center. 
on this piece, I'm also going to be using some of these unfinished wood letters that I picked up from Dollar Tree to place right over top of that burlap. And I'm painting them with the Castle Color chalk paint once again, and I only painted them with one coat of paint. Once all of my letters have completely dried, I'm then taking them and setting them right on top of that burlap so that I can have them placed exactly where I want them before I start attaching them. And to attach each letter, I'm taking some hot glue, I'm placing it on the back of each wood letter one at a time, and then just placing them where I had originally already had set them into place. To go along with the burlap that's on the front of this piece, I thought it would be super cute with some burlap on the inside of the box. So I'm just taking another scrap piece of burlap that I had and pressing it down inside, using some floral foam on top of that burlap so that I can place in some of these boxwood stems that I picked up from Walmart. I'm cutting each stem down so that it's easier for me to place into the floral foam. And then I'm also going to be using some of these lavender stems that I picked up from Walmart. And these ones were already cut down from a previous project and I'm just placing them in between the boxwoods. Then to fill all of the areas around my boxwoods and my lavender, I'm using some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree and just setting that down around all of my stems. To add a little bit more detail to this piece, I'm adding some jute around both of the handles. To attach the jute, I placed hot glue on the inside portion of the handle, attached the jute over top of the glue, and then just wrapped the jute around several times, and then just hot glued the end of that jute piece down. Here is my flower box center piece all finished. I love how this one turned out. And what's even better is I can switch out all of the florals that are inside to go with each season. Now moving into the second piece that I'll be transforming today, it is this really simple wood frame. Frames are really great to get at your local thrift store. You can find some amazing deals. This one is from Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. For this frame, I thought it would be really cute painted a white color. I'm painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did do two coats of paint on this piece and I made sure that I painted the back of the frame as well. After my frame was completely dry, I then took my folk art wood tint in the color gray and I used an old towel to apply this and I applied it just like I would a stain. I did go over it twice with this to get the color payoff that I wanted. Next, I'm taking five large popsicle sticks that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna be placing these on the inside of the frame so that it gives an appearance of wood slats, but I needed to measure them and cut them down to size. So to cut them down, I am using some scissors, and I just cut off the top and bottom portion of the popsicle stick. And then for the fifth frame, the fifth frame, the fifth popsicle stick, I did have to cut some off of the side so that it would fit perfectly inside of my frame. Now that all of my sticks are cut down, I'm applying my Craftsmart wood stain in the color brown, and I'm using an old towel to apply it to all of the front sides of my popsicle sticks. This is a water-based stain, and it dries really fast. Next, I'm attaching my popsicle sticks on the inside of my frame. To do that, I'm placing hot glue on the inside lip of the frame and then pressing down my popsicle stick on top of the glue. And I continued that step until I had all five of my sticks attached. The design that I'm using on the front of my frame is this Bless Our Nest stencil that I picked up from Michaels. This does come in a pack of stencils. And the color that I'm using to paint over top of my stencil is my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. After the paint completely dried, I then peeled back my stencil. To go above my words, bless our nest, I'm using some of this buffalo check ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I'm making a really simple bow, and then to attach the bow above my words, I'm using some hot glue right on the wood and then pressing the bow on top of the glue. And then for the tail ends of my ribbon, I'm just cutting those into a diagonal shape. Here is my frame all made over. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful and I love the way that it looks displayed in my home.
Now for the third piece that I'll be making over today, it is this letter holder or remote holder. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's a really good solid piece. I paid $3.99 for it and I picked it up at Goodwill. I knew that I wanted this piece to go with the rest of the decor that I have in my home, so I'm painting it with the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Castle. I did have to do two coats of this paint to get the black color that's originally on the piece all covered up. I did make sure to paint the inside of this piece as well. It was a little tricky since the openings were kind of small, but I just took my time and eventually got everything all painted the same color. Once those coats of paint were all dry, I then took a chip brush and my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I dry brushed that color over top of my entire piece. I wanted to add a little bit more depth and dimension to this piece so by adding this second color it really makes everything pop. Next I'm placing this home stencil right on the center portion of my piece. The stencil is from Michaels. And for the paint that I'm using over the top of the stencil, it is my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink. And to help me not get any of the ink color on all of the places that I've already painted, I'm using a small piece of paper around all of the areas that I'm stenciling. Once that paint was all dry, I then simply peeled off my stencil. To make my home word look a little bit more distressed, I'm taking that plaster color paint on a chip brush and very lightly dry brushing over top of it. Here is my piece all made over. I did end up using it as a remote holder. I placed a book in the back side, some coasters, and of course my TV remotes. And that wraps it up for today's thrift store makeovers. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching.